All right, so let's do a sponge filter episode. All right. It's your job to convince everyone to use a sponge filter. Oh, God. So. Hey, everyone. It's Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Got Lamont in the studio. Hello. Real Fish Talk episode 14, I believe. It's around there. You know, you're watching it. You're not caring what the number is, so we're just going to get to it. Today, we're talking about sponge filters. Love them or hate them. We love them. You should love them. If you hate them, don't watch this video because we love them. All right. <laughs> so tell them why we love them. Now that I've given this intro, let them, let them know why we love them. Well, I would say as far as filtration goes, um, and speaking primarily uh, biological filtration, there's, in my opinion, as far as ease of use, they're as bad as good as they get. That's just... They're definitely easy. That's just me. So here's how a sponge filter works. I'll explain that because I do it all day long at the store because people go, I don't need it. So we got a sponge filter and we all know, everyone says, don't leave the sponge in the sink. It's going to grow a ton of bacteria. Well, yes, it does. And sponges do grow a ton of bacteria, which is a good thing in an aquarium. So we grow a ton of bacteria. That makes sense. Then all we need to do is we know we need to make water touch bacteria and that breaks down waste. Perfect. How do we do that? Well, at the top of this thing, let me take this little tube off, there's a little nipple right here. We attach an airline hose to that, and then we get bubbles coming out of it. You might have seen them in your local fish store or something like that. And what that's going to do is, as bubbles rise up, it's going to carry water through the sponge. And you've experienced this in your life, you just might not know. It's called a Venturi effect. So when you're standing on the side of the road, and a bus or a semi drives by you, there's that wind that wants to pull you onto the road or with it. We're going to do the same thing by making this wind or air rise up. It's going to pull water with it. And since the only inlet, well, I should show you that. The only inlet, once we're making air rise, if we took the sponge off, is through all these slits that are here. And so as air rises up, it has to pull water in. And if we put a lift tube on it, it now makes the the suction even stronger. So the longer we contain the bubbles, the faster the pull is in here. So turbo. <laughs> that's right, turbo mode. And you can act, you actually can turbo these. And so if you have an aquarium, and I know you can't see the table here, but if you had an aquarium that was up to here, like this crazy tall, if you put a really long extension tube on it, the water gets moving quite a bit. And you can actually use airlift systems to move water, like in high-end koi ponds. They'll use huge blowers to move water from the pond to the filtration system because air is much more efficient than running the motor for the impeller for the water. So it actually is cheaper to run. Instead of a one horsepower uh, pond pump, you get to use like oh, a quarter horse air pump to do the same action. But yeah, so you can get this huge lift going, which is awesome. And, uh, yeah, so that's how one physically works. And now you kind of understand, like, yeah, we're going to make water touch that. It's going to be good. Why else do we like a Lamont? Well, it works great in shrimp tanks in the sense that you don't have to worry about your shrimp getting caught in your either yep. hang on back or your uh, canister filter or something to that degree. Uh, also, it's good for um, preventing fry from getting sucked up through the same processes. Mm -hmm. um, and the other benefit too is the sense that it provides breeding ground for the bacteria which the shrimp and the fry often feed off of. Yep. And uh, also, your f the thing that I like about it is that uh, the chances of popping a hose and watching your canister filter flood your living room <laughs> are greatly diminished if all the uh, filtration parts are inside the tank. Yeah, so. and you can also, so we've discussed using a sponge filter with only air, but technically you can use it with a power head also. You can just stick a power head on the top of this, and then it has a lot of suction, and it'll clog up much, much faster, mm -hmm. uh, but it can all be internal as well. And then, uh, so like, there's, I know there's more benefits, so I'm just going to prompt you, like, why is this better than, let's say, a different type of filter in a power outage? Well, because, let's say, in a canister filter, if you lose power, that cuts off 
the water flow, which in turn also cuts off the oxygen flow. And so after about roughly 15 minutes or so, bacteria starts dying off. And if you're gone all day and say the power goes out, it's out for six hours, it comes back on before you get home and you're none the wiser, but of course you've just bombed your fish tank with a bunch of dead bacteria. So in the case of the sponge filters, the, a lot, of, lot more of that bacteria survives. Um, right, because your aquarium might be 100 gallons and then it's got, this can pull oxygen from the 100 gallons of water where in your canister filter, if it's as big as a five gallon bucket, the most water it could have is five gallons. Right. So. Yeah. All right. What else do we like about sponge filters? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't. There's nothing I don't like. I could tell you why I hate about everything else about other filters. Uh, I like the fact that they're cheap. Like they this sponge cheap. filter might only be ten dollars. Like you can get filtration. Like this sponge filter. It's rated up to like seventy-five gallons or whatever. But really, Actually, I think that one's rated even higher. Is it? Do they make the claim? 80. 80, 80, 80 gallons, gallons in theory, which I've pushed these pretty high, you know, don't get me wrong, but, like, it's not going to handle 80 gallons with four Oscars. Like, it might handle an 80 gallon that's got, like, you know, 200 guppies, you know, right. with plants and stuff, but it's not going to handle just, like, a crazy load. But, uh, oh, I can think of another thing I like about them. You can always run extra of them in your fish tank. And then if you ever need a hospital tank or you're setting up another aquarium, you just go, oh, watch this. Bloop, cycled filter right into the next one. And it only costs you $10 as opposed to, oh, yeah, let's have an extra canister filter kicking around for a couple hundred bucks that someday I might set up. No one does that. Well, not no one, but I don't do that. <laughs> uh, the downfalls to this beast is that it's big and it's in your tank. So you got to put a piece of decor or something in front of it. You don't have to, actually. I don't. You see my... my fish room all the time they just chilling you know i'm not afraid of looking at a sponge filter i like to see how dirty or clean it is and you know it's a utilitarian thing but you know you get some plants growing up in front of it and a lot of honestly if you are display tanks at the store people don't like what's the filtration like oh it's a sponge filter behind that plant you can't see actually yeah i mean that i suppose the disadvantages of using a sponge filter in a very heavily planted or heavily uh I guess hardscaped tank so which tends to cut down on water flow and so you can kind of get dead spots and stuff like that mm -hmm. but that's not any different than say a canister filter where you'll notice dead spots in the same situation i can and think of usually they're way worse because well, yeah. you just see a mountain of mom yeah. sitting in the corner i can think of another thing another disadvantage to this turtles will take bites out of it and plecos will too if they get really hungry Really? Yeah. I've got, I've had turtles chomp, 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 <laughs> you know, and you're going, dang it. You know, that doesn't happen with your cancer filter, really, because they, they don't really bite the plastic that much. But this, they're going, hey, this tastes like food, because it sucks some food in, you know, sure, or whatever. Right. So, you know, um, so that's probably a lot of the pros and cons. There's probably a few more, like you could DIY an egg tumbler out of this, and there's some things you can do. Uh, but I want to talk about a lot of other things about sponge filters that people don't know. That's like, how do you clean one of these things? Well, I'm gonna start with what you don't do. You don't take it to the sink, you know, because the chlorine's gonna kill off all the bacteria. Even though it's the easiest way to clean this, it's also the easiest way to sterilize all the bacteria. And you might even have chloramine in your water, which is even worse. Um, so when you do have an, uh, an aquarium and your sponge filter's in there, the first thing you wanna do is get a fish bag that you got from the fish store and you bought your sweet, sweet, sweet collection of zebra plecos or whatever it was. And you want to get this bag under this sponge all the way around this thing so that you can take it out and it doesn't slough off everything. If you just go, oh, I'm going to take this out, it's going to leave behind all the gunk it's collected and just bomb your tank and look Terrible. It looks horrible. <laughs> and so then you got to put it back in there and let it collect it all after another few hours. And then you go, oh, this time it needs the bag because that can't happen every time. Right. Uh, and it goes for intake sponges as well. You'd want to clean them in the, the same yep. exact way as yep. just taking the bag and kind of going up. So around. you get the bag around this thing. You've got to continue. You can use a Ziploc bag, whatever you want to use. Uh, just make sure it doesn't have a bunch of holes because you don't want brown, poopy water all over. Uh, but you get, it up, you get it out of the aquarium. Then you kind of take the top off, so to speak. 
and usually I just kind of take it in half and I'll let that sit in the tank so it's got some bubbles going and then I break not break the sponge but take the sponge off and you're clean it inside the the bag and it's gonna make chocolate milk as I call it and uh, when it's really brown you kind of hold the sponge filter and you, you kind of want to wring it out because you don't want to have all that poopy water you know it sucks up water obviously the sponge right uh, so you kind of compress that and then you take that bag and you go pour it on a house plant because it's tons of nitrogen and good stuff for it. Then you grab another bag of water out of your aquarium and wring it out some more until it basically comes almost clean. You're never going to get it like, oh man, this thing was the cleanest day I bought it. It'll never get that clean again, but it gets pretty darn clean where you're like, yeah, the water is mostly clear. Uh, and then you can put it back in, so to speak, and you're accomplishing two things. One, you serviced your filter, and we didn't kill any of the bacteria. It all stayed alive, stayed wet the whole time. And two, we're doing a partial water change all at the same time, so we're not wasting water. If I take it to the sink, that water that I'm going to clean this with directly wastes it. Where if now, if I use that same water I was going to use and replace the water in my aquarium, I might have changed two or three gallons at least. And on a 100-gallon tank, that's almost nothing. But, you know, two or three gallons on your 10-gallon, all right, I've done my water change for the week or the month or whatever system you need to do. Sure. Um, I also like the fact that you can run this modular. So I could run three of these in a tank and just space them out much more. I could run a big canister, but I'm going to have the intake on one side, return on the other, let's say, and I might have dead spots all over where I can, and I can also move these, go, you know, this week I'm going to run one up here, you know, next week, oh yeah, I'm going to actually keep it back here, and so it'll change the currents in the tank, and you can play around a lot. Um, what else? You got any other tips? I can still think of some more. I can go on for days. Um, <clears throat> they make a pillow in a pit? <laughs> you know. I mean, I would say that one of the other benefits, too, is since it does run off of air, you don't have to worry about running an additional air stone in your tank as well as far as yeah, oxygen. Yeah, so you hit maximum like oxygen, which is sweet. That's a you know great byproduct. Mm-hmm. And why they use them at fish fish rooms, fish wholesalers, that type of thing, you use a big blower, because we already established that air, it takes a lot less electricity to make a ton of air than it does enough power to turn a turbine and a motor. Um, well, I guess air blower has a turbine, but with water load to create back pressure. Um, more efficient? Is that yeah, it's way more efficient. Okay. Yeah, it's <laughs> way more efficient. Um and then, so there's some other things to talk about, like this one right here is called a reticulated, is it reticulated? Yeah, reticulated sponge, yes. which that means is all the cells are open. And so basically all the bubbles when they make it is popped and it's very coarse. And so this one's designed not to catch nearly as much debris. Then they have very fine sponges, like the top of this microphone is a very fine sponge. That's a closed pore sponge. That will collect insane amounts of tiny particles and will really polish your water. So you can do a combination. Well, I got a coarse one here that like will never clog, and then over here in this corner I got one that really polishes my water, but if it traps too much debris, it might kill off the bacteria on that one. But this one will keep on trucking. It's, I, I used to say it's impossible to clog one of these, and then I met... <laughs> a cleaning client uh, that managed to do it. They'd only ever call me in like once every eight months, even though I told them, like, you really need to let me do more maintenance on this. But when I would get there, it literally, they managed to clog one of these, and they had this goldfish in this 150-gallon like, so tank. So what does it look like when it's clogged? Is it this... So just imagine that it's just brown, like, like if you took brown mud and just caked it on. Right. And then it doesn't compress. Like when you press it, it doesn't move. So I would have to like, oh. so the way I would clean it, like I had to devise a system because I don't want to kill, of the bacteria that's there, I didn't want to kill it off. So I used a power head in the aquarium, hooked to a hose, and then I went outside and I basically got a low pressure hose and it would kind of slough off in chunks. Like you'd have to wow. keep working it. And then you'd, you'd, you'd take it apart, too, and kind of get it from the inside, and you'd start getting it to compress a little bit. But, like, if you did this move, it didn't come back because wow. it was mud. It would just stay. Yeah, yeah. And so you'd have to just keep – and eventually it would come back after, like, no joke, like, literally, like, 50 minutes of work. Like, it's – you know, I would change, like – because they'd only let me do it, like, once every eight months, and I felt horrible for these fish – 
I'd end up changing like 80% of the water. So I'm just working on these sponges, working on them, working on them, working on them, because I'm waiting to drain a butt ton of water anyway. Uh. And then on top of that, you know, kind of a side story here, they had the world's worst water pressure. Literally to refill the tank, it was like an hour and 45 minutes. And they just, they're out on a lake, and it was it was terrible. And once I finally got a, a smartphone like that actually had data and everything, right. made it way more bearable. Because otherwise, I was reading like <laughs> like old lady digest, like what is that? Like a, farmers all want to act. <laughs> pretty much, like I'd just be like, hey, there's a book I haven't looked at the last time I was here trying to kill two hours, you know, and. Uh, terrible. You'd think I'd plan ahead and be like, oh, bring Amazonas or some magazine. But I'd, I'd always be like, oh, God, I've got nothing to do. You know, so side story on the sponge filter. It is possible to clog these with air. It, it's way more possible to clog them with a, a power head. Like if you're just ramming stuff through there and you've got a bunch of load in there, you can clog one of these with a power head. But air, I used to think it was impossible. Because I, some sponge filters I've run for eight years and never even had to clean them on a light loaded tank and right. so that i just figured like well at eight years you can never clog this thing and i didn't have to clean them out of out of like oh this thing's super bad i gotta clean it it was so i just thought it was impossible until you 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 know it was an an older woman who you know so this is gold i, I gotta i gotta tell the whole story now i, I feel bad but oh. classic scenario bunch of goldfish like this big they're the only thing that will really survive with this kind of older woman neglect i mean not neglect like she loved these animals let's be real but it's not that she couldn't afford it but she'd forget and like so i would try to be like well i'll stop back by in another month and i'll kind of just do a quick promo clean for you but i'd show up and she just wouldn't be there she was getting you know forgetful like i'd call her the night before like i'll be there tomorrow at noon oh yeah i'll be ready for you and then i'd show up at noon and it's literally like a 50-minute drive out there. She lives in the middle of nowhere, and then it's right. like no one's home. Doors are locked, and I'm just like, oh, God, I can't keep doing this because I'm wasting two hours of driving just because I feel bad for these animals. But, you know, the classic, well, you know, every time I walk by the tank, they look at me like they're so hungry. And so she'd just go through massive amounts of cans of flake food that she'd buy from, like, Fred Meyer. Oh, and, man. you know, you watch her do it, and she just opens the can and, you know, shakes it like you're, you know, it's like, <laughs> oh my god, no. Like the so, way, say, somebody would put Parmesan cheese on pizza. Is that what yeah, <laughs> except you wouldn't have the thing trying to, like, you know, it's like you took the top that let you sprinkle it into, like, oh, let's just pour half this thing in there. Right. Nicest woman ever, don't get me wrong, and I did love her tank, and, I, you know, she just, elderly, you know, and she's sure. had a tank forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, and it's a big tank, and she loved all the fish she's had over the years, but, yeah, so it is possible to clog one of these, so, huh. it is much more possible to clog a fine poured one, that one you can get a little taste of, like, oh yeah, I compressed it, it didn't come back, and you gotta work it till it'll come back, but I like that they're cheap, I like that... I basically can tell someone, like, hook up... Well, I like that I can hook it up for someone at the store. I can literally hook it up to the air pump and go, all you got to do is put this in the tank and plug it in and basically, hands off, it will keep some fish alive for you until we can kind of walk you through this whole process. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think... Oh, yeah, the other reasons... I had more reasons than I ran... Not ranted, but told my old lady story. Um, <laughs> so, another thing... Like, a lot of times, bamboo shrimp and stuff will love to uh, collect, like, on the line that comes out of here and just catch the goodies that come out with their hand, with their fan hands. Their little baseball gloves. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, ooh, yum, yum, yum. <laughs> um, so that's another benefit. Um, obviously, it provides a good feeding area for fry. Sometimes on a fry tank where I've got small fry, I'll intentionally like drop the food onto the sponge just because they're already at the sponge looking for bacteria. And they go, hey, what's, hey, that tasted pretty good. I should start eating that instead of the bacteria. And see, it's an easier transition instead of like, go eat it over here. And they're like, no, the food's right here, man. Not leaving. <laughs> um, what else do I like about these? You can also, you could plant them. You can, like, uh, tie on java moss and java fern and stuff like that. You can kind of make them look better, but it becomes really hard to clean them after you do that. So, you know, you got to make sure it's not a high-load tank. Um, some brands, I guess. We can bring up some brands. Like, here's a Hakari one. It's Aquarium Solutions, which is Hakari. This is a fine 
poor one. We sell this one for like nine ninety nine in the store. This one's a this one's one of my favorite for the store and in my fish room. This is an ATI or a hydro sponge. ATI up top there. I swear this company is like damn near out of business because they I don't know, they got a bad business model. I love this product and I want to sell it in the store and I do sell some. But well, they make a uh, adaptable intake sponge. They do make too. an adaptable it's intake sponge, amazing. but they basically make it impossible for you to buy it. They're like, ah, oh, yeah, we, we do sell it. You know, <laughs> uh, there's kind of a wholesaler in the area you can get it from, and you contact them, and you get no response. You, you call them back, and they're like, no, well, that's that's your contact point. I'm like, I'm literally trying to carry this product, and they're like, well, you just got to go through them. I'm like, well, they're not responding, and they're like, well, we'll look into it. And months and months and months keep going by, and I'm getting nowhere with it, and it's. It's really frustrating when you have a product you like, you want to sell it, you know, um, but you can't because you can't even buy it really. So and it's, it's hard to get. And so that's why like Hikari and other brands have been uh, coming in making sponges because they're just dropping the ball on that. And I don't know if it's someone's second business or whatever, but they're based out of Georgia and it's only a P.O. box. So it's not like the... You know, like, oh, come visit the sponge lab. It's you know, it could just be some guy's garage for all I know. But they've been around for a million years, and so I don't know. Maybe there's just no money made in sponges, and so. Um, but what else? I had something while I was ranting about how not being able to buy it. Um, oh, I like the fact they last forever. Like, you might literally have one of these coarse ones. And it runs for twenty years. And you clean this all the time. Maybe you got to replace a sponge, but. You know, it's not like a, a canister where like, oh, I, my seals went bad after four years or, you know, not a lot of these parts <laughs> go bad. Right. So. And then, of course, one of the other beauties on that particular model is the fact that you can actually attach an air stone. To yes. It. On the ATI one, it's got, a, whoa, Ooh, that's, that's loud. Cool. So they're weighted, by the way. That's, that's There's a big weight in all of these. <laughs> so that way it sinks right away. That's what that sound was, me dropping it. But. Oops. On the other side, so we've got the part where it goes up. There's another nipple, and you can have a little piece of, of uh, airline tubing connected to an air stone, which I use the never clogs. Uh, but you can connect it to an air stone, and that will make the bubbles finer, so it's not glug, 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 glug. It's much quieter. Mm -hmm. And it's been proven that a smaller bubble creates more lift. Now, I've been down the rabbit hole and back about 10 times i'm not convinced that more lift is even a better thing because it like you're like it picks up more waste it also directly steals more food like when you feed so it's like well you know and if i'm feeding live baby brine or something like that i actually want a very slow flow but uh the never clog air stone i like uh, people like Gary Lang and some others, they use some of the very fine pour ones that you can uh, clean with, like, is it, it's not hydraulic acid, it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's like citric acid, that's what I was trying to think of, citric oh, acid, you clean okay. it with citric acid, but my, my thing is, I literally don't even want to do that, so I use a never clog, like, I never want to have to take this apart and go, oh, I gotta clean the air stone, and then if you get just like a basic, you know, 69 cent air stone you get from the the uh the store the fish store which we don't sell but uh your normal fish like a petco they're gonna clog so fast and they create a lot of back pressure on your pump they actually burn your pumps out way early and you end up replacing them all the time they're just terrible so invest in a good quality air stone whether it's a never clog or some other type but something that you know hopefully is reusable so you're not killing the environment it doesn't create too much back pressure but that's a big problem like those wood ones you create micro bubbles are really hard on pumps, so I don't necessarily recommend that. Um, so other things I like, I can I can keep listing things. <laughs> this one you can actually keep stacking it. So I don't have another one. I can I can go get one in the fish room, but in theory, if I took this base off, you can literally just stack another one on top, and so you could have like oh I got a dually going. And what they'll do with that is they'll make like two or three or four sponges and you can use that as a big intake sponge for your pond pump or a big sump system or something like that. Or you create a big stack of sponges and you put a powerhouse on the top and that thing is literally just a biological powerhouse. Um, so these ones do stack, which is kind of nice. So it's another reason to like this company, even though they're hard to get a hold of. Like, I don't even think you can buy them on Amazon. That's how you know a company is hard to work with <laughs> when you can't buy it on Amazon. Like, uh. that's mind-blowing. From a hobbyist standpoint, like, I'm, gr I'm happy that 
as a store owner, you can't buy it on Amazon. But as a hobbyist back in the day, it's like, Amazon doesn't carry it. They have everything there is ever to have to make money on. It would be on there. And it wasn't, most of the time it's on there. I'm not going to say, I haven't looked today, so maybe there is. But, you know. So, yeah, I, I run, I'm trying to think. I don't, well, I'm not 100% sponge filter, but I got to be like 95% here in my own fish room. And we're at least 95% in the, in the store, you know. And uh, I think I can make the claim, I'm pretty sure, that every tank, even if it has a filter on the back here at my home in the fish room, uh, even if I had a hang on back or a canister, it also has a sponge filter. Mm. So at the store, the plant tanks that are the plant sales tanks, they don't have a sponge filter because they're not trying to gas off all the CO2. But otherwise... Pretty much universally. If I'm keeping fish, I want a sponge filter in some capacity. And I know they're old school, and people go, oh, technology's so much better, and blah, blah, blah. All I'm going to say about that is there's a reason why guys like me, wholesale facilities, other stores, trust sponge filters with hundreds of thousands of dollars in fish. Because we've had cancer filters where it's like, oh, the impeller went out last night, came in this morning, all the discus had suffocated. That's awesome. Or whatever it is, that never happens with a sponge filter. With a sponge filter, either your entire store or facility went down because the big pump went down, which normally you have more than one running, so it'll just you'll come in and be like, oh, it's barely running. I better get that other pump fixed. Or B, uh, it's working flawless. That's that's what you do. You typically, you're like, yeah, I haven't had a problem in 20 years straight. Where how many times have, at home have you had a a hang on back or something like that that didn't start after a power blink, you know, or just something as simple as that. You weren't even home, you're at the movies, power blinked for a millisecond. Not even enough to reset the clock on the on the, the microwave and yet, what the hell, my tank filter's not running. You went to bed and problems are happening. That doesn't phase a sponge filter, let me tell you. So, the one thing you do have to watch out for with a sponge filter <laughs> is the air pump you do use, you need a check valve. So if the power did go out, we don't want to siphon water out. That's the only part. A hose does leave the actual system. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. So sponge filter. Maybe we'll break filtration the entire segment into, we'll just talk a bunch about one thing each time. Because either, A, I can talk about sponge filters for probably 20 or 30 minutes now. Or we can make a filtration video that's two to three hours. You know, so maybe we'll make it in bite-sized chunks. There you go. You got anything else that you know or like about sponge filters or hate? There's got to be some more hate. What's the hate about this thing? Um, let's see. Well, I would say one of the things uh, at the store that drives me nuts is that Loach is like... Crawl down yes. The side. <laughs> so we don't use any of the uplift tubes at the store because uh, they grow algae. Like they grow corn. algae, and plecos love to get in there. And mostly the reason is not because they get stuck, but every customer goes, "Is that guy stuck in there? Does he need to be saved?" <laughs> like, no, he's he's snails, plecos are just eating the algae. They get in out of there all the time. Uh -huh. Eels and loaches will go down inside this thing because they go, you know what's down there? That's a sweet cave. Mm -hmm. Lots of oxygen, too. It's like a bubble bath. It's sweet. Yeah, so when you're cleaning those, you want to make sure that uh, you check before you dump it out in the main. Oh, yeah. There's been a lot of times in the where sink or wherever you're, you're cleaning water it out. and you're, you got your bag full of water and you're like, oh my God, there's a pleco in here. And then you're like, got the poopiest water ever and you got to get your net and kind of get it out of there and get them back into yeah. the tank. But yeah, that's something that if you were going to, if you were going to hate on this somehow, hate on the fact that, yeah, stuff can get caught in That's a I pretty guess. weak hate. Oh, it is. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I just, you know, I like to be but fair. But I'm saying that there, those are things to watch out for that sometimes yeah. fish do like to go inside and live in. Yeah. So when you're cleaning them, you got to be careful. Yeah, indeed. I would say it's even safer for bigger fish. Like if you got a real badass dovi or something that likes to beat on filter intakes and stuff like that, you don't have to worry that it knocks your spray bar up enough where it's spitting water out of the tank. And these things can take a beating, and they're never going to be like, oh, man, it fell over the wrong way and create created a problem. So i got another i got another sponge filter story yeah yeah i <laughs> believe it or not i do Whoa. so when i went to um 
Old World Exotics down in Florida, which Leif de Mace and I owns. Basically, Leif de Mace and I is who Demasoni Cichlid was named after. So it was named after him. I was at his facility. Super cool, by the way. Um, but because there was so much calcium in Florida, yeah. the sponge was literally rock. Like, it didn't compress at all. And it was completely white. Like, it looked like a piece of coral. But you could tell it was because it still had the uplift tube yeah. and, uh, you know, the base and everything. So you totally knew it was a sponge filter, but it essentially looked like a giant bio ring because it was just encased completely. You couldn't see any of the actual sponge anymore. And in reality, it worked perfect cause it, because it had all the holes like a bio ring. It, it worked. Like, it was just really cool to see, like, wow, I didn't realize that. One, there's that much calcium in that water. It's crazy. No, that's why he's got a farm there, because he's importing all these wild-caught Tanganyikans and uh, in some Malawi, too, but mostly Tanganyikans. The water is so crazy hard that the sponge turns to rock, and he goes, yeah, all my sponge filters that way. I'm just like, whoa, that's that's hard water. I mean, I've seen, you know, you think, oh, yeah, that's hard water, but, like, when stuff starts turning to stone, that's legit <laughs> hard water. Oh, my gosh. While I was there, in fact... There's, so how hard the water and high the pH is, just to kind of put it in perspective, we were there and we wanted to film and do things, and I, I kind of got a, a backstage tour type of deal when I was at an ALA convention, like, not the one that I'm wearing right here, it's a different ALA convention, but, you know, I, I shook enough hands and begged enough people and cried enough that I got to go on this tour, uh, and it was like monsoon season, like the worst weather ever. Like they're like, you probably shouldn't drive out there. And we're like, <laughs> yeah, but I leave later today. Like I need to go there. There's no wait until tomorrow. I fly out tonight. Sure. And uh, so we get out there, and it is just pissing down rain. Like literally, like it's one of those times when you know when you get out of the car and you walk to your house, and somehow in those twelve feet. You're literally your coat is soaked through and your shirt's wet. It was that, like the twelve feet to the door, and uh, drenched. Yeah, completely drenched. And so what his problem was, like they were on high, high alert, because so much water was coming and rainwater has no minerals in it. It Ooh. rapidly changes the pH and the hardness in all the ponds because. It's a farm, and there's indoor stuff, and that stuff was safe, but yeah. it's really cool when you see, like, this huge pond, and there's, like, oh, my God, there's 300,000 yellow labs. But they, so what they had to do is, it's poor employees and himself. Like, they're, it's horrible, right? Because it's horribly windy. It's a monsoon. It's raining. It's not cold, though. It was still warm. So, you know, like, we were kind of at home because we're from Seattle, you know. We're like, hey, it ain't that bad. You know, man up. But then we kind of figured out why they were so sketched out, and that was because... The ponds will crash. Like, all the fish will die. So what they have to do, they have to start turning the water chain system on. They have to start flushing tap water into all of them to counteract oh, the rainfall. That's crazy. Yeah. And that is one of those moments like, hmm, until I saw this, I never fathomed that in my mind that a fish farm would have that problem. But crazy rain, if you're in a hard water state or hard water fish, is horribly problematic. You know, so they're testing water and going, do we need to flush this one right now? No, we can f finish flushing that one. We'll flush this one next. Because you can't just flush 180, you know, 50,000 gallon ponds at the same time. You don't have enough pressure and water to do that. So you constantly are testing and moving and, wow. you know. So we were kind of staying inside and looking at a lot of stuff. And then we did go outside, but it was flooding so much that all the bridges between the ponds and stuff, the water was over it. And so, you know, we were just getting drenched. And, you know, they all had, you know, like, knee-high water boots and stuff, but, you know, I, I'm one of those guys that I only get to do this once. Who cares if I ruin my shoes and, you know, and i got to fly <laughs> on a plane with wet shoes and it's going to be terrible. Right. Um, but it, I got to see some of the most amazing things ever. It's just, you know, it's really weird to see, like, wow, look at all those cichlids and this and that. And it was harder to see because the rain pelting the top of the water made it hard. Sure. But every once in a while, you'd be like, holy cow, that was like 60 Venustas that are this long came up and just saw me for a millisecond. <laughs> you know, super weird to see aquarium fish almost more in nature style. But not that that has anything to do with sponge filters, but that guy did have really weird sponge filters that were hard as a rock. But I don't get to tell that story very often, and it's a wicked cool story, and I love it because 
it was super weird. Like you just you don't think about things like rain being a horrible problem at the fish farm. Like right. here, because we have soft water, when it rains, I go, Hell yeah, free water change. You know, if my pond's overflowing a little bit, I look at it as a good thing there. Mm. Because rain's always acidic, very, very bad to them. So wow. Yeah, it's well yeah. it's raining inches per minute. So. Right. And it was don't you know, torrential downpour, flooding, don't drive out there. Like he even said, like, I can't guarantee the road like so there's the road and then there was like a dirt slash gravel driveway down to this farm. He's like, I can't guarantee that your rental car is not just getting completely stuck. Like you might not make it from the road to me. But we were just like, oh no, we'll make it. Like the car might not make it, but we'll make it. <laughs> and so that was awesome. And uh, you know, I would say thank you to the people that got me in there and stuff like that. But you know, I don't want to. I don't want to give their name out so people start bugging them to get them in and that type of thing. So I'm just very thankful. If if the people that helped me get in there watching this, trust me, one of the biggest, one of the most fun days I ever had in fish keeping was that day because we did a lot of cool stuff and that was stuff that. You know, you can visit a fish farm. We visited other fish farms, but you don't get to see it in a torrential downpour of rain, like, oh, my God, you know, the world's coming into an end status. So, yeah. Anything else on sponge filters? Because I could just talk stories all day long. That, <laughs> that's going to be the Real Fish Talk episode number 15, Story Time with Corey. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's all I've got on sponge filters. That's not true. I've got more, I'm sure. But that's all I've got for now. Uh... I don't know, I can't really think of anything. You can totally DIY extra. a sponge filter, too. We're not going to go into that today. Maybe I'll show you some other day, but you can make these. and. Oh, yeah, they're super easy to make, and I would say not, you don't even have to have a chamber. You just have to have some air jab down in the middle. Yeah, you can jab part. down air. You can make it out of PVC. And maybe I'll make that a quick tip Tuesday. I've got ways to hot rod these little things, and then I could do a video on here's how you make one, even though you should just go buy one because they're like $10 as opposed to spend five dollars in parts and three hours of labor and uh, cut your finger to do it so and then i would say what what are the odds of finding these in the one of the big box stores 22.7 percent chance <laughs> no it, in in a box store i can say for petco and PetSmart for sure which you know some people got big owls and pet land and stuff like that but for pet smart and petco in our area for sure 100 percent they do not carry this and honestly most retail independent stores don't carry this because I actually lose money every time I sell one of these. Because if I sold you a normal hang on back that you got to throw cartridges away from, I make a ton of money. When mm. I sell you, you know, this is the everlasting gobstopper. <laughs> gobstopper. When I when I sell you this, you go, so I don't need a filter for 20 years? Essentially, yeah. Maybe you got to replace the sponge after five or eight years or three years or whatever it is. But mm. yes. And so... If I sold you that hang on back and with a cartridge system, which we don't really sell, but if I did, you know, I might be going, here's this, and now I get four dollars a week from you every week till you die. So, yeah, I don't even know why I started. Oh, yeah, because you were saying availability. I was like, why do right. I go rant right. about cartridges? Yeah, I'm not, and you're not talking about the hydro sponge in particular, like they don't have any sponge filters. Right. Yeah, it's not even this brand. It's just straight up, well, that's counterintuitive to our business plan. We can't nickel and dime you to death. And that's why a lot of canister filters and stuff don't even come with an intake sponge. And I hate this. This is rant alert oh, right here. Man. Now yeah. you've done it. <clears throat> I hate <laughs> canister filters and even like aqua clears and stuff like that. I hate when the instructions say... You need to replace the sponge filter part every six months. And the bio rings every six months and all this stuff. Why? There's no point to replacing it. Why would it. you? Yeah. It's a money grab. It's not even getting rolling until six months. That's right. You know, <laughs> at six months, it's hitting its prime. And, oh, i got to throw it out and replace it. Yeah. And stores don't fight it enough because it's a revenue stream for them. And I, I maintain that my customers stay my customers. And the hobby gets better the more success people have. Not the more money I make. I get more successful the more money I make. But I don't stay in business very long. If all my customers are having a bad experience when they change out their sponge and their bio rings and all this stuff and stuff's dying, that doesn't further the hobby. And I just, I know it's money driven. It's not based on 
any fact because if it was a fact it would say replace it when it's dirty replace it when it's not doing its job here's how you test that job right. instead it goes oh at three months you should replace this at six months you should replace this at this you should do this i just i don't agree with that and uh you know it's one more reason i like sponge filters because i don't have to sell you a lie i can just say uh, you know what this is what I use in the store, and this is what I think you should use at home unless you have a reason like, well, it doesn't fit my aquascape, or my turtle eats on it, or you've got a reason. But otherwise, if there's no rhyme or reason, I'm going to recommend what I know and use and trust my livelihood and Lamont's livelihood on. Not, you know, I would never trust all of our money and our careers on a hang-on-back filter or a canister or something like that no one's as reliable as this and the reality is it always fails when you don't want it to at the most inopportune time when you just bought all those expensive fish that type of thing this never lets you down so all right well that's all i got thanks for watching us i got in a good rant that feels good that's a good way to end an episode <laughs> let me tell you uh like subscribe share it with your friends tell people why they should buy sponge filters do as i say not as i do even if you don't use them uh get get one started in your tank so that way you can get your neighbor started the kids whatever like you can just go i mean this is literally a tank in a sponge if you hand this to someone that's never kept a fish before all of a sudden they can't fail really like they can overfeed and it's just going to handle it. It's going to happen. And so this thing, these are magical tools that we can help other hobbyists with. And that's why I'm so passionate about it. But, you know, if you like what we're doing, do all those things I always tell you to do at the end of the video. Make sure you've subscribed already. Tell us why we're bad. Uh, you know, that's, that's more helpful than why we're good. Give us more things to talk about. If you really want to know, you really want to see some rants on something let me know if you really want to see me tear apart you know the walmart brand filter or something like that i'll do it you know if wardley <laughs> makes a filter if they did it'd be brand walmart let me tell you oh so you should show some of those ancient wardley i, I will lamont's calling me <laughs> out so next episode we'll show you i've got these ancient wardley uh food containers that i bought in this old setup i bought the other day which is super cool, but I'll show you how funny the packaging is and stuff like that, and we'll make that in another episode, and so watch for that. Even if you hate sponge filters, who doesn't love vintage fish food? Vintage fish tanks maybe I, as well. And maybe <laughs> maybe I can get Lamont to eat some. We'll see. Oh, God. We'll see if I can get maybe 20 bucks. Or maybe I can get a number out there that'll get him to do it. <sighs> or maybe, maybe we can do it where, what would it take, what would it take for you to eat one little piece would it take like a hundred likes on this video like throw a number out there like for some reason well not like two million because that's not going to happen but is there enough could they rally enough oh man i don't know i'll tell you what you you throw out the number and i'll do it too so it's not just you you're getting me into it S stuff's like 60 years old i know so it's, it's got to be not that bad for you right it's got to be like organic they couldn't even screw it up that bad back then you're saying that all the bad bacteria has died off by now, so it's safe to eat. <laughs> Clearly, it's ancient, you know. I would say, oh, God, this is horrible. If we can get to, like, oh, God, I, I don't want to throw a number out because I know it's probably going to hit. If we get to, like, 300 likes on this video, I'll do it. Because <laughs> normally we get to, like, let's say, like, 30, right? So if we can get, like, 10 times the number, I'll eat. And I, I know what the food is, and uh. so I'm really dreading it, and he knows what it is, too. And, uh, <laughs> you know, so if we can hit 300 likes on this video, I'll do that. It's retarded. And if I get sick, I'm totally going to film it and be like, wow, I'm never <laughs> doing this again. Because I, I could legitimately get sick because I, oh, God, it's, I don't think I'll puke. I'm, I'm pretty good about that. I don't think I'll puke, but I definitely, it could legitimately get me, like, actually ill. That would be horrible, but I, I, don't, that, I doubt but... it would. Yeah, so if we can get to 300 likes... So you really got to make your grandma watch this video and go, Grandma, you don't got to watch it, but I need your like. Log into your YouTube account. I know you got one. You're watching cat videos. And hit the like button. We get to 300. I'll eat some fish food. Not a lot. Like, I'm, I'm literally going for, like, a piece here. I'm not going to tell you, like, I'm going to chug a bottle of fish food, but I'll eat a tiny, 
not tiny, but whatever whatever one unit. I haven't looked at the food, but I, I know it's on the package. So uh, I'll eat one unit. That's not true. Vitamin C. I will chew one unit. I can't oh, guarantee I could swallow man. it. I mean, it could be like so bad I couldn't swallow it. So let's let's get the technicality out there that I will chew. It could also be so hard that it like breaks my teeth, but it will at least go in my mouth and I will make a valid attempt on camera <laughs> to consume Food from like 1962 or whatever the hell it is. You sicko. Yeah. <laughs> you see, he's not down, but I'm really going to try hard to get him down. Like, if we can get to 300, I'm really going to try and persuade him. So, mm. that being said, I hope it doesn't, I hope it hits like 297 because then I don't have to eat it and we got all the benefits out of that many likes and enough people had to watch it. So, that's what I'm really hoping for. But if it gets to 297, someone's going to push it over 300. The worst part is there's probably someone out there right now that goes, you know what, i got a computer program it's at 8,000 right now. <laughs> like, holy shit, what have we done? So, all right, that's wrapping up the video. If you guys want, we're going to show you the fish food no matter what. If you want to see us eat a tiny piece of that, which I don't want to see. Him, not me. Oh, man. <laughs> you, so, now, 300 likes gets me to do it, but we need like 300 people in the comment section, section saying, I want to see Lamont do it. That, that's that, you can't argue with a mob. <laughs> all right, we're out for tonight. We're getting loopy and too tired, and we've been working all day, so we'll see you in the next one. We do appreciate you watching. What do you got for me? Uh, I'm ready to go home. All right, <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thanks.